All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I just brought up the web interface to our access gateway. I'm going to give you the end user experience, and then I'll go in and show you the configuration. Um, <clears throat> some of the things I like to talk about initially from the end user experience and also from the customer's pers perspective is uh, that we do provide our own two-factor authentication uh, that's included with our product. We do support RSA, we support Duo, and all the other major two-factor solutions. But if you are a customer that does not have a solution is looking for one, uh, you can also use our built-in uh, two-factor. It's called Log. Uh, it's, it's called Motion Pro uh, OTP. It's an app that you can download for your Android or iOS device. It generates a six-digit dynamic code, and uh, after you type in your username and password, you'll type in that code that changes every 30 seconds and that will authenticate you through. Uh, some other things I'll be showing you is that the web interface is completely customizable. Um, so you can brand it to, to, your, to your company. It does not have to look like a race product. Um, a lot of our customers, when they're done implementing our product, you would not even be able to tell it's our access gateway. Uh, one of the other things I'll show you in a, a shortly is our standalone client. So if you have end users that do not want to use a web browser, we do have what's called Motion Pro. It's our standalone client. That is also platform agnostic, so it does run on uh, Microsoft Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and Linux. So I'm going to log in to our Access Gateway using my Active Directory credentials. And you'll see here I'm presenting, it, uh, presenting with a number of resources. Um, I'm going to go through each one uh, individually. I'm actually going to uh, make sure I'm disconnected off of my VPN first. So now that I'm in here, you'll see that I have web links. Um, web links are proxied web applications. Um, and when we talk about proxy, what we're talking about is the outside user or the client uh, making a connection and authenticating to our access gateway on the outside interface. We then close that connection, and then we make an internal connection to the web application or maybe to the remote desktop or even the VPN. So you'll see here for um, OWA, the web link here, I'm going to click on that. And it's going to make a proxy connection over through to Outlook Web Access. So essentially we can close down the open ports on the firewall to our Exchange servers and allow the proxy connection and authentication to come through the Access Gateway. So you can also combine that with two-factor and really move all your two-factor to our Access Gateway and you don't have to manage that in multiple locations. The other thing you can see is that we uh, enable single sign-on so the user doesn't have to log on twice. So for proxy web links or web applications, we can support things like OWA, SharePoint, uh, Zen App, Horizon View. So there's many applications that we can support, and I would like to say virtually any application we can support to our web link technology. The next thing I'm going to show is Desktop Direct. That's for proxy to RDP connections. Those RDP, RDP connections can be uh, a physical or virtual desktop uh, back at the office. It could be a terminal server desktop. It can even be a terminal server remote app. And you'll see as this loads in, I have a number of uh, uh, desktops presented, most of which are desktops back at our office. But you'll also see I have Putty here. That's going to be a, a remote application. We can also have the ability to uh, put them in different folders. So I'm going to make a selection to this Windows box. This is back in my office, and it's going to make a proxy connection. You'll see it's 127.0.0.1. That's that loopback address. So it is a true proxy. The end user never makes a network connection. We actually proxy that connection back to that internal resource. And by doing that, we can do things like prevent copy and paste from the remote desktop back to the local computer. Um, we can prevent uh, print redirection and uh, drive mapping. And that's all policy-based, so you can decide to enable or disable those features for a specific user or group of users. The last thing that I want to show you um, as far as functionality is our, our VPN. You'll see right here we have a Layer 3 web VPN, okay? But I'm also going to show you that we have our standalone client, and I'm going to bring that up here. Now, our standalone client is a unified client. It's called Motion Pro. It can be used for a Layer 3 access or for the desktop direct functionality. So you'll see if I simply click on the, uh, the demo site here, 
and I log in, it's going to authenticate me, and it's going to show you, show you the same desktops that you saw through the web browser. And again, this Motion Pro is good for Windows, for Mac, for iOS, Android, and Linux. And with that same client, I can also disconnect, and I connect back to my, my Layer 3 VPN to the office. And I'll show you more about the configuration on Layer 3 and some of the differences and features and functions that we have with that as well. Now, we do give uh, clients the ability to download the standalone clients right from our web interface. You'll see the Motion Pro downloads. Uh, so you can upload your uh, PC version, your Mac version. You could even upload the Linux version in here. The Android and iOS uh, versions would be uh, available from the app stores. Um, but you could also use this section if you wanted to upload other resources as well. So if there's another uh, client that you need to upload or maybe instructions on how to configure the, the client, you could upload that here as well. Some other features of the web interface and also with the Motion Pro standalone client is that we give you the ability to change your password, okay? So that might be your Active Directory password if you're using Active Directory to authenticate, or it could be your local password if you don't have Active Directory in your environment. We can also support password change notifications, so we will query Active Directory and uh, take a look at the policy for your password requirements, and we can uh, provide a notification to the user to change their password. So at this point, I'm going to take you into the web UI. The web UI is for configuring the appliance. So I'm going to log in here. So what I'm going to show you is a number of uh, key features on our appliance for configuration. Uh, some things that may set us apart from our competition. Uh, one of the things that um, we pride ourselves on is ease of configuration. So I'm, hopefully that will come across during this demo. So you'll see here, um, this is the, the landing page. Uh, it gives you a little bit of detailed information on the system information. But just a few quick networking things. Uh, basic networking, uh, we give you four ports to work with. We do support link aggregation or bonding. So uh, most uh, customers, they're putting one or two ports out on the outside interface and one or two ports on the inside interface uh, to ARM configuration. Uh, we do support high availability. Um, high availability can support up to 32 units. We do support session state failover, so that way if a uh, unit goes down, all the connections are maintained because the session state is uh, copied or mirrored across all the other units. And then we also have a runtime configuration sync, which allows changes to be replicated across all the units um, when, they're, when changes are made. So you'll see at the top left, I'm choosing uh, the drop down here, and you can see I have a number of portals. And uh, Paul mentioned uh, up to 254 portals uh, being able to be added, uh, you know, based off the different models that we have. But you'll see, on, in my instance, I have different portals based off of what I'm actually going to do with the portal. But you could also say that if you're a multi-tenant, you could say that each portal is for a different customer. So there's many different uses for these portals. Um, you might say that I have a portal for my Layer 3 connections because I want to do a host integrity check. I want to check against antivirus and spyware um, and definitions. But on my proxy services like web application and desktop direct, there's no need. So you may separate those two uh, functions into different portals. I'm going to drop down into our desktop direct portal. That's the portal that we were demoing. That's going to load in. And I'm going to show you a few things regarding security, authentication methods, and also some uh, VPN functions. So if you click on SSL, you'll notice that we have the ability or provide you the ability to disable older protocol support. So you'll see here we have 1.2 enabled and everything else disabled. In addition, you can come over to Cypher Suites, and we give the ability to disable older Cypher Suites. So with that, you can eliminate uh, older web browsers and really limit the end users to, to newer web browsers that are going to be more secure for your environment uh, or for connecting back into your office. You'll see here we have enforced minimum Cypher strength so that if you do disable some older Cypher suites, rather than the user getting a page cannot be displayed, you can actually uh, send them to a custom URL that may tell them uh, why they failed and maybe provide them a link to download a newer browser. So it's a really nice um, feature 
to provide end users with some instruction if they do fail to get in because they don't meet the requirements. Under security set settings, we give you the ability to uh, add your session limit uh, per user or maybe your idle session timeout. Now, this is a global setting, but we can also allow you to do that per user, per group of users. So you may have uh, certain groups of users that may not want to time out for, you know, six or seven hours if they're idle, or maybe you have another group of users that you want them to, after 30 minutes of inactivity to be able to time out. You can set these policies based off of the specific group or user. For authentication, we're going to support LDAP, which is generally for Active Directory. We'll do RADIUS. Um, RADIUS is generally used for a two-factor solution, so maybe something like Duo or RSA. And then we also have client certificates. Client certificates is nice because you could check or have the access gateway check for a specific certificate on the remote system that may be a managed asset before uh, presenting them with a logon screen. And then we can also support multiple methods. So you may have a method for your employees to log in, and then you may have a separate method for maybe uh, your IT staff to log in or, or outside vendors, okay? You may also say that uh, we require two-factor for external users, for, but not for internal users. So it can be based off proximity as well. We're going to drop down to portal. Portal is the look and feel. Uh, things like enabling password changes or maybe importing your logo can be set from here. Uh, even more advanced, you could come into themes, and you may want to change the look and feel, maybe change the colors, fonts, or text. Um, you might want to add a disclaimer. So you could come into the actual uh, portal here and go into the HTML and edit that directly from the device. You may want to export the whole theme, give it to a web developer. They're going to change the look and feel completely, brand it to your business, and then you'll import it in. We even give you the ability to manage or host the portal on an external web server. Um, a lot of enterprise customers will do this if they have uh, a web development team that manages the look and feel but the security team doesn't want to provide access into the access gateway to that web development team. They may uh, host that externally. We're going to drop down now to VPN. Uh, we talked about the proxying of the web applications and proxying of your RDP or remote desktop connections, but you may need to provide that layer three connectivity. Um, sometimes there's no way around that. So how do we protect uh, your business from these layer three? Well, hopefully they're coming in through, ma through a managed asset, so you can do that host check and, and make sure they have the right antivirus and definitions are up, up to date. But now they're going to make that network connection. So we want to make sure that we're only providing access to the internal resources that are there they should be getting into. So we have the ability to uh, configure multiple resource groups. Okay, and in my example here, I only have one, but you could have many resource groups listed here, and then based off of the user's uh, group permissions, Active Directory permissions, they'll be assigned the correct resource. What a resource allows you to do is configure full tunnel or split tunnel. It can give you the ability to uh, uh, add the, you know, which IP address or subnet are, are going to route to the VPN. We can even limit it by port number. You can also say that I only want to allow Outlook access through this tunnel when it's connected, and you can specify it by application. And we also give you the ability to, to exclude items as well. But let's say, for example, you give, uh, you, know, you give a user access to the 10.1.6.0 subnet, but you want to further define that um, rather than creating multiple entries here. Or if you're doing full tunnel and you say, I want to allow every, everything must go through the tunnel once they connect, but I want to further define what they have access to. You can manage that through our ACL, which is really our access control list that can be um, granted to specific users and groups, and it's uh, permit or deny, and you can simply specify the protocol, the IP address, or even port numbers in this ACL list. So you can really define and limit what external users have access to once they connect to that layer three. Everything that we're doing in here is based off of our roles. And most of our customers utilize Active Directory, okay? So just to explain roles, uh, what we do is create a role. A role is really a, a group name uh, is, is how I like to define it. So, for example, this Outlook Web Access 2013 role name. Well, now what I do is I match a qualification up to it, or I say who qualifies 
to match up to this role name. So what I can say is that the user must be in uh, these two groups, OWA 2013 and desktop direct underscore role. So they're conditions, and the conditions are easily added by just dropping down. You can choose group name. You can select add from LDAP, and then you can search your LDAP and add those groups in. So you can have multiple criteria. So once I have a role name and then uh, state what qualifies uh, a user to be in that role, then I can say, okay, what resource is, a tied, is tied to that? So if you'll see here, I have my OWA 2013 role name that says, if you qualify, you get access to this link. And you can have multiple URLs or uh, resources tied to a specific role. This is just one example. So you'll see here I have multiple resources. You know, the web UI role has, you know, four different uh, WRM resources where some of the others may only have one assigned. And then I can also do the same for VPN, where I can specify which role has access to which resource groups and which net pools. And I'm just going to talk about net pools for a moment, going back to VPN. So net pools are going to define the uh, IP address that the remote client uh, uh, is assigned when they connect in. We do give you the, uh, the ability to specify a dynamic IP, IP range. That can be a non-routable subnet. With that non-routable subnet, the end user never gets a real IP address on your network. And then using our NAT functionality, we can NAT through only to the resources that a user is allowed to, to access. We also have this stay connected function. Stay connection is going to allow a user to maybe switch from one internet provider to another or close their laptop and reopen it and then reconnect without having to re-authenticate. That's really nice for that mobile workforce. Um, but again, this is all tied back to under security settings, the session lifetime policies. So you'll never keep yourself vulnerable um, just to allowing sessions open. You can actually define what the idle timeout would be for that stay connected. Uh, last thing I'm going to show you quickly is our logging. So you'll see under monitoring, uh, we do log everything that goes in and out of our device. So we have very good logging capabilities. We also provide you the access to export that are dumped at to a syslog server for your historical information. And we also do provide email notification. We have SNMP and SNMPv3. So we can, you can get a really good look at what's going on in the box and uh, not only just for monitoring it from a security perspective, but also from troubleshooting as well. 